I've been quite fortunate in life. I've, I've done some interesting things. Played rugby with some of the world's best. I, uh, I've jumped out of airplanes, climbed mountains, run marathons. I once even dared tell my wife that she did not need another pair of shoes. <laughs> but none of these things come even close to the challenges of parenting. Parenting can be a roller coaster, these incredible highs and sometimes the most crushing of, of lows. Without a doubt, parenting is not for cowards. In the work I do with a national charity, uh, we travel all over the country, uh, we support families, we, we, we uh, put together resources for parents, and I get to meet audiences all, all over the place. And it's clear to me that in an audience, even like this one today, we will have the whole gamut of life represented. And even here today, we'll have different types of parents. Step parents, single parents, foster parents, adoptive parents, those who parent together, parents with children with additional needs, all kinds of parents. And for some of you, life is good. Your kids are doing well. For others, man, the kids are driving us crazy. But there's probably a mum and a dad in here today and your son or your daughter is breaking your heart. Then of course, uh, there are those of you here who, who are not parents and, and to you I'd say perhaps, perhaps just listen to what I'd like to share today and uh, there may be uh, children that are important to you or, uh, or keep in mind that what I'd love to share today is more about relationship. Perhaps just uh, apply that to your, your situation. Now, when it comes to parenting, I've come to believe that there are three golden rules, and I'd like to share those with you today. The first is, harness the power of words. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names can never hurt me. So goes the old rhyme. But that's not quite true. There's an ancient Hebrew proverb that says, the words of the wicked pierce like swords. We may all be able to remember a time when we were in primary school when someone said something that really hurt us. An influential person, a, a teacher, a parent, a, an adult, a, a friend perhaps. And even today when we think about it, years later, we still feel that cutting feeling in our hearts when we think about how that made us feel. But also perhaps someone said something to us that was really nice and it made us feel great. A friend recalls a time when he was in year five. He was not doing well at school at all. And his, his teacher brought him to the front of the class, asked him to hold the paper for the, for the guillotine in the arts class. He says to me, um, uh, I was staggered. I've never been in the front of the class, but I held that paper firm and I gave the teacher a great age. The next week, the teacher did something he'd never done before. He asked the same kid to the front of the class to hold the guillotine paper. And the week after that, and in week four, he said to the rest of the class, Robert is the best holder of guillotine paper in the whole class. My friend has gone on to do some amazing things. Partner of a 10 office law firm, senior partner. He is a best-selling author. He's written more than 20 books. He was awarded the OBE by the Queen, but he still remembers that day, decades ago, when a teacher said, Robert, the best holder of guillotine paper in the whole class. Words are powerful. Another old proverb says, uh, the tongue has the power of life and death. Catherine Hill is our UK director at, at Care for the Family, and she tells this incredible story where she was doing a parenting seminar at a, a major conference a few years ago, talking about the power of words. And, and afterwards, a mother comes up to her, uh, to her and says, uh, Catherine, what you said today has really touched my heart. She said, um, we, have, we have three children, the oldest and the youngest, they're doing fine. But the youngest, oh, oh sorry, the middle one is, is, is a handful. She says, um, whenever there's trouble, it's almost as if this one is in the thick of things. Her name is Grace, but sometimes we call her disgrace. And then as she was speaking to Catherine, tears filled her eyes. And she said, I, I realize now the mistake we've been make, making. We're always criticizing this girl. We're always coming down hard on it. Everything she always hears from us is negative, negative words reinforced by this silly nickname. We're going to stop that. A year later, Catherine is again at this conference and a lady comes running up and uh, she says, Hi, Catherine, do you remember me? Uh, uh, don't you ever call a daughter called Grace? Yes, yes, we do. Oh, and 
Remember, we, we call that disgrace sometimes, but we don't do that now anymore. We don't criticize her. We try and find reasons to, to, to build her up, to give her, uh, to give her confidence, to give her praise. Because like just with Robert, when we hear praise, we sometimes, even if the task that we have completed is, is, is quite small, when we hear praise, we get that sense that there's some other successes out there for us. And then she said these incredible words. The change in grace has been transformational, but not just her, our family. Our words are powerful. My son is, is grown now. Um, he is he's 26 years old. Uh, some people ask me if I was 13 when he was born. I'm not quite <laughs> sure that's a, that's a compliment. But Joey and I, um, uh, we hang out together. We love that. We watch a movie. We go watch the game. Uh, but we, we, when we want to talk, we go to Nando's. We sit down, we eat chicken, we drink Fanta Orange, and we talk. We've been doing this for years. Now, I work in parenting, but there are times in my life when I, as a dad, I, I really feel the need for, for help. I often pray for wisdom, and I read. And I came across these five principles to, to help us build strong communication with our kids. And whenever we're in Nando's, I try and work through these principles in my, in my head. And the first of these is, Make it all about your kids. This is, probably the, this is probably the area where I made the biggest mistake when, when, before I came through, uh, to, to these principles. I used to sit down and share with Joseph my thoughts, my ideas, and, 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 and my map of the world. But that's not what it's about. It's about Joseph. And then make it safe. I try and let Joseph know that he can, during these talks, he can talk to me about anything. I'm not going to criticize him. I'm not going to put him down. I'm not going to have a go. I want to hear, yes, I want to hear his hopes and his dreams, but I also want to hear about his fears and his failures. Make it safe. Ask questions is the next principle. Now, I know that sometimes it's absolute agony, especially during the teenage years, to try and get one syllable and draw another syllable from our children. But be assured that the questions we ask our kids are often what they think about. This is the stuff that they take away with them, and they may even talk to, the, to, to their, 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 their friends about that. Ask good questions. And then shut up and listen. It is amazing what we can learn from our kids if we just listen to them, if we really pay attention. And the fifth and last principle there is speak words of truth, building blocks of life into their lives. Now, this is been going on for a while and was going really well. So I thought I would try it with Joseph's girlfriend. Funnily enough, her name is also Grace. And um, I invited Grace to a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And I was going through these five principles in my mind as we were, as we were talking and it went really well, or so I thought, until we got to the point about speak building blocks of truth into their lives. And I said to her, you know what, Grace, I think you're a lovely young lady. You're kind, you're friendly, you're polite, you have good manners. But what I really love about you is you always seem so happy. You have the most beautiful smile. And whenever you walk into a room, it is almost as if spring itself follows you into the room. The girl in front of me burst out in tears. I thought, what did I say? She said, Gareth, the last couple of nights I, I could hardly sleep. I was so nervous. I didn't know what you wanted to say to me. Sometimes I thought, perhaps, perhaps you didn't like me. Since then, that girl and I have drunk enough coffee to sink a battleship. And on the last occasion, we were sitting and drinking and sharing our coffee and talking away. And she said, I love spending time with you. And then she looked into the steaming mug in her hands and she said, um, but I wish my dad would do this with me. Whether our kids are three or 33, our words are powerful. Golden rule number one. Harness the power of words. Golden rule number two, just hang in there. Some of the most, uh, the most uh, incredible letters, most inspiring letters that we get at Care for the Family are parents who write to us and say that they are relieved to hear that they are not the only ones struggling. They're not the only ones who go through, through hard times. And then we remind them that, that parenting is a roller coaster ride and sometimes we just need to hang in there especially during those teenage years. One psychologist describes the teenage, teenager experience something like this. 
It's almost as if on their 13th birthday, they take off on a rocket ship into the stratosphere and we lose all communication. Well, there's a grunt from time to time, but no one can decipher that. And this can go on for years. But then, round about the 22nd birthday or so, suddenly, signals from outer space. They're alive. And most of them land. Sometimes we just got to hang in there. But let me talk to you a little bit about keeping on. I've been fortunate. I've played with some pretty good rugby players in my life, but probably one of the best was a guy by the name of Farnes Lombard. Farnes was a winger. He was super fast. He was quick with his feet. He could change direction on a dime. He was strong under the high ball, good hands, dependable and defensive. He was the last man you knew he would make his tackle. He had Springbok written all over him. One evening during a, a training match, he, he very badly dislocated his left knee. And a well-meaning bystander came along, tried to relocate it, but in doing so, damaged some of the blood vessels and the nerves running into his lower leg. And I can remember visiting my friend in hospital while the doctors were still trying to save his leg. And I stood by his bedside and, and tears were running down my, my cheeks. And, and he looked up and smiled and said, hey, mate, don't worry. I'll still be a springbok one day. And then a few days later, the doctors amputated his leg just below the knee. At his first Paralympic Games, Farnes Lombard won three gold medals for South Africa. He set three new world records. He's competed in several Olympic Games. He's won six gold, two silver, one bronze. One of his world records still stands this day, nearly 18 years later. And the last time I saw Farnes, he was standing on an open-top bus during a victory parade in Johannesburg. Thousands of people lining the streets as, as this bus snaked its way through. And he was waving, standing on top of this bus, waving his latest haul of medals at all of these people. But he looked unsteady. I was watching on television, and at first I thought I was making a mistake. So I got up and I moved closer, just to be sure that what I was seeing, I was seeing. Farnes was unsteady on that bus. Because in his one hand, he was waving his medals, and in his other, his leg. <laughs> Triumph and disaster, one yard apart. Guys, I love sport. In sport, it's easy to measure the difference between gold and silver, winning and losing. You measure it in seconds, you measure it on a scoreboard. But in life, it's not always that easy. In life, sometimes we can be so close to a breakthrough, a dream, a, achieving a goal in our lives, but we won't know unless we keep on keeping on, unless we hang in there. Even as parents, sometimes, sometimes we can feel the most rotten parents in the world, but triumph and disaster, one yard apart. Hang on in there. But I'd like to encourage you to hang on for, a, for another reason, and that is, um, it's not just for our sake. It's for the sake of our kids. Take the teenage years again. We used to put the teenager, the teenage years down to, all the teenage trauma down to hormones. But then came MRI scanning. And since MRI scanning, neuroscientists have been able to actually look inside the heads, inside the brains of our teenagers. Now we've always known that there's this burst of brain growth during toddlerhood. But we've discovered now that there's a similar burst during, during puberty. Now, whereas this burst of brain growth in toddlerhood is all about balance and movement, in puberty, it's about uh, 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 emotion and memory. And the last part of the brain to, to develop is the prefrontal cortex. Some, some uh, 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 psychologists refer to this area as the brakes or the policemen of the brain. This is the part of the brain that gives our kids common sense that allows them to defer immediate gratification for the sake of longer term good. But this, and that is why we say to our 15 year old, I can't believe that you are even thinking about going to a party the night before your GCSE maths exam. And she says, but mom, the exam isn't until tomorrow afternoon for goodness sake. This part of the brain is still developing. And that's why we gotta hang in there for their sake while they are still developing the equipment that they need to deal with life to make sensible choices. Hang in there for their sake and ours. And then the third and final golden key, well, that's very simple. Just 10 words. 
But these 10 words should be engraved in the ceiling of every parent's bedroom. So it's the last thing we see before we go tonight. So it burns into our very souls. Perhaps even we should repeat these 10 words 50 times a day as long as we have kids. Don't take all the credit. Don't take all the blame. Three golden keys. Don't lose heart. And always remember, parenting is not for cowards. Thank you very much.